What's up YouTube? Jeff back again here from High on Android and DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm coming out with you guys with my full review of the Moto 360 second gen Android Wear watch. Now you guys saw me unbox this if you want to go check out the unboxing. I did a double unboxing with the 46 millimeter version which I am using personally, I've been using personally and I also did the uh, smaller watch which is the 42 millimeter uh, women's version which my fiance has been using and of course this review is going to be about the 46 millimeter version because that's the one that I've used personally but uh, I will have some updates hopefully my fiance has been using hers and she promised me she'd give me her feedback so when I do a written review which I'm gonna post over on high on Android I will try to include some of her thoughts in that review so let's get right to it first of all let me just say up front I really love this watch I wasn't sure how much I was going to like it when I first got it because last year's Moto 360 was not my favorite watch. Um, I had quite a few concerns with it and mainly those concerns were the battery life was pretty terrible and in addition to the poor battery life it also lagged because of the outdated processor that was in that particular watch. Now of course Android Wear has evolved quite a bit as a software platform over the over the last year and in addition Motorola put some really nice uh, hardware, they made a few minor changes that make a pretty big difference in the overall experience of the watch. So first let me talk about the big thing that everyone wants to know about a new Android Wear watch when it comes out and that's the battery life. So my battery life on this watch has been fantastic. You guys can see right there if I zoom in, see if I can get a close up, you can see right there I've got 74% left right there on my watch face. That's the watch battery right there. So you can see I've got 74% and that's using it today since about 5.30 this morning, so it's 1.19 p.m. So that's actually really, really good. Uh, right there, you're looking at about almost eight hours of use, only 25% gone. So again, if you project that out linearly, that's about 32 hours of use. That's pretty insane uh, considering that last year I could barely get 12 hours out of my Moto 360 before it would be completely dead. So in my experience, you know, average usage, I get about I don't know, probably between 20 to 25 hours of use on this guy. Now, of course, if you have a long day like me, I usually work 18 hour days maybe some days during the week. You still might want to charge it at night because you're only going to get an extra seven hours the next day. So yes, the battery life really can't last you two days of beast mode usage if you get a ton of notifications. That's going to be difficult if you work long days. But if you work a regular eight hour day, should be no problem getting you through uh, eight hour work day and you should still have some battery life left over for the next day. So it just depends on how long you wear your watch, how you use it. I wear my watch all day and in addition I also have my phone connected to Android Auto. Now there's a known bug with Android Auto where if you have an Android Wear watch at the same time as it's connected to Android Auto you also get this very strange situation where you get a lot of battery drain. And so because of that it turns out that this watch battery probably is a little bit worse than most people's Android Wear uh, experience with the Moto 360 second gen. So take that into account, you probably get better battery life than I did. The second thing is the fit, the finish. You guys can see I've got the 46 millimeter with the brown leather band and you see I've got the silver casing. It's got a little gold trim right there. You can see on the volume button, of course. I really like the look of the watch, uh, even though this was a small change by putting the button here at the top right, putting it at two o'clock instead of here down the side. There was a small change, but it was one that actually was pretty nice. Uh, now it's pretty difficult to bump this button uh, if you're using the watch just because of the placement to accidentally bump it. I find it being a little bit nicer up there. They also made these nice lugs here, which make it easier for the watch to fit comfortably on your wrist. This leather strap here, which is the Horween leather, has been incredibly comfortable. My only criticism of it, as you guys can probably see from the video, is it's got quite a bit of wear. Uh, I've been wearing this for about, I don't know, I guess it's been a couple months now almost, uh, maybe seven weeks, six weeks. You can see here that I've sweat in the watch because I'm a guy and you know, when I'm wearing the watch all day, of course my wrist is gonna sweat some. You can see the sweat stains already there on the Horween leather, but it's super comfortable. The only thing I would say is it does get some wear. You can see some wear right here on the band from where I've probably worn it. I wear my, my watches with leather bands a little tighter than maybe I should, so that's probably one of the reasons that this has some extra wear on it. But the comfortability of the leather band is really nice, and of course, the great thing about the Moto 360 
is once they start offering the replacement bands, now I don't think Motorola has yet, I've been checking, but once they do offer the replacement bands, you'll be able to swap it out for any of the official bands that you want, get a metal band, uh, etc. They're also gonna make some sport bands. And of course, there's also a lot of third-party options. So I'm gonna just sort of giving you guys a preview here in the review. Tilt made a nice uh, stainless steel um, buckle and clasp with a nice uh, fabric type uh, watch band, silicone watch band rather, for the Moto360. They sent me this one to review, so I'll have an unboxing of this one on the channel. So if you guys want to get a third party band now, Tilt is a great option. I'll drop a link down there. I'll have a full video unboxing and review on this. I need to get it out of the box and try it out. But that's the other great option about the Moto360 is there are a lot of third party uh, watch band makers who are making bands for this watch. So you don't have to wait for Motorola to come out with one. All right, so the next thing is, of course, on a smartwatch, it's not as important as the phone, but the lag factor is important. So how smooth is the watch? Well, this watch has been super smooth compared to last year's version. I haven't really had any problems with lag. There is one problem I've noticed on Android where, let me see if I can get it. At the top, when you swipe, when you swipe from your main screen over to where all the apps are, you see the top where it becomes those three dots? Now, if you want to type on settings, you have to wait until those three dots set before it'll go to settings. But this is on every Android Wear watch. I've noticed this. If I tap on settings, you have to, you can see here, if you tap on settings right away, it takes a minute before it will go to the settings menu. But that's pretty much with every single watch that I have. That's not a criticism of the Moto 360. And compared to last year's Moto 360, it's essentially got no lag compared to what I experienced with the Moto 360 last year. Overall, I would say it's incredibly comfortable. The battery life is, of course, pretty awesome. You've got health tracking, of course, if you want it. You can use Moto Body, which is Motorola's uh, built-in app. If you have a Motorola phone, it plays really nicely with that. Uh, it does a pretty good job of steps tracking and fitness tracking. I've worked out with the watch. That's probably, again, part of the reason why the band's gotten a little sweaty, but I've got some extra bands. I can change it out. Uh, it's super comfortable. The improvements they've made are great. This is... Actually, I was surprised to say, but I will say in my full review of this watch, this right now is my favorite Android Wear watch because I like the 46 millimeter uh, size, which makes it a pretty big watch face. Uh, you get a big, bit bigger watch face than you do with the Huawei watch, even though the resolution is a little better on the Huawei watch. Um, but I like having the bigger face because I have a little more room when I have the cards peeking up, etc. On the actual watch face, you can see more of your clock. So I really enjoy that. And the Moto360 is right now my favorite Android Wear device. It's the one I've been using almost every day. I really need to get that full review going on the Huawei watch, so I'm gonna to switch to that. You guys have probably seen me wearing this quite a bit in the videos. So for the most part, uh, there's not much else to say. If you guys are interested in this watch face, I stole this from my good friend, Flossie Carter. He had it in his video for the Huawei watch. This is the futuristic watch face. I'll drop a link in the description below if you guys want to check it out. If you guys have any other questions about the Moto 360 second gen, my experience is with it. Please drop me a question in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Also, if you want to follow me on Google Plus or Twitter, my links are in the description. You can also catch me writing over at news.highonandroid.com. You can also catch me over at dopetechdaily.com. If you guys would hit the like button if you enjoyed the content, it'll really help out the channel. Also, if you want to subscribe, please do. I would love that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.